Ladies and gentlemen, to The Late Show, I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I have... That's so nice. Oh, yeah. They, 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 That's yeah. like a drink of cold water right there. I've been off for a week. I've missed you. I also missed a lot of news, which I did not miss. Mm. But there's some new news about the news, because CNN is cutting back on overhyping everything <laughs> as breaking news, which means... <laughs> yes. Which means overhyping everything is now up for grabs, so we have breaking news. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you shocked and terrified to report that what I'm saying right now means nothing. It is all a false sense of urgency to keep you captivated long enough to get to the next Lipitor commercial. And hold on, is this... I have to break into this breaking news with a breaking news alert. At 11.38 Eastern Time, host of The Late Show, Stephen Colbert, is feeling a bit snacky. Now, the story is... This story is still developing. No word yet on how and if it will ever resolve. Stephen, Stephen, tell me, my friend, what, what are you hearing? Well... I don't know how Bubba... Bubba Will... Bubba Will Graham. Thanks, Stephen. Now... <laughs> Now, it was subtle, but you may have noticed we used some of CNN's graphics there. <laughs> we found them in a dumpster behind the network next to Chris <laughs> Cuomo and CNN Plus. <laughs> Why are you awing? None of you watched it. <laughs> According to an internal memo, CNN is cutting back on the breaking news graphic because its impact has become lost on the audience <laughs> And CNN should be focused on informing, not alarming viewers. And with CNN out of the game, that'll leave plenty of alarming for the folks over at Fox News. In fact, <laughs> they are now counter-programming with Tucker Carlson's new show, Look Out! Gay Immigrants Are Coming For Your Penis! <laughs> now... Today, of course, is June 6th. And you know what that means. It's National Yo-Yo Day. <laughs> it also means it's exactly 17 months since the January 6th insurrection. And this Thursday, the January 6th committee is set to make its case public with primetime hearings. The insurrection, yeah. Mm. That's right. That's right. That's right. The insurrection. Insurrection is going primetime. Get ready for your new favorite show, America's Got Treason. Now, mm. Mm. we might actually get some answers from these hearings because due to a Kevin McCarthy hissy fit, the only Republicans on the January 6th committee are noted critics of the big lie, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. So, <laughs> unlike... <laughs> unlike the insanely combative impeachment hearings, these primetime hearings might function normally. It'd be like an episode of The Real Housewives without any wine. <sighs> Luann, we just ate dinner. Now I'm going to bed at a reasonable hour and take a melatonin. Don't forget your doggy bag. I love and respect you. <laughs> I said goodnight! <laughs> the January 6th uh, committee has gotten a lot of information from reluctant witnesses because they've been willing to play a bit of hardball. Take former presidential aide Peter Navarro, seen here pointing to his worst enemy. <laughs> Navarro. It's a good joke. Quality family joke. That ain't fat. Navarro was one of the ringleaders of the attempted coup, and we know that because he cleverly confessed the entire plot on national TV. What I show in the In Trump Time book is the, this plan we had called the Green Bay Sweep. The plan was simply this. We had uh, over 100 congressmen and senators 
on Capitol Hill ready to implement the sweep. The sweep was simply that. We were going to challenge the, the results of the election in the six battleground states. At 1 p.m., Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, and Gosart, a, a representative, started the Green Bay sweep beautifully, challenging the results of Arizona. The remedy was for Vice President Pence's, the quarterback in the Green Bay sweep, to remand those votes back to the six battleground states. Green Bay sweep. <laughs> so Navarro thought he could admit to trying to overturn a fair election on national TV, and there'd be no consequences because he gave it a fun nickname? <laughs> officer, officer, you can't arrest me. I didn't do anything illegal. I was just doing a little move I like to call the bebop step stab. A bebop step stab, bebop step stab, 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 stab. Stab, stab, stab. Beep, beep, bop. Stab, stab, stab. Stab, stab, stab. Stab, stab. stab. <laughs> the committee thought, here's a crazy idea. Let's subpoena the guy who admitted to planning the crime. Now, Rav Navarro refused to show up to their subpoena. So on Friday, Navarro was indicted and arrested on two counts of contempt of Congress. He was. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> This upset Navarro, uh, and it also upset Texas Representative Louis Gohmert, <laughs> seen here suddenly remembering where his fingers have been. <laughs> After learning of Navarro's arrest, Gohmert actually said this. It actually puts an exclamation point on the fact that we have a two-tier justice system. Uh, if you're a Republican, you can't even lie to Congress or lie to an FBI agent or they're coming after you, they're going to bury you. Nowadays, you can't even lie to Congress or <laughs> lie to the FBI or hotwire a car, then drive that car to a bank and grab all the money at gunpoint, and then head to the nearest zoo to throw rocks at the pandas. There's just, there's a two-tier justice system. One tier for the people who obey the law and a whole different tier for the people who break the law. How is that fair? Hold still, Ling Ling! Hold still! <laughs> I winged him. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Uh. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. We're getting more breaking news. Okay, this this is just in. Is this confirmed? He's just confirmed it. Louis Gohmert remains the dumbest man alive. <laughs> so. So one party openly attacked our democracy and then bragged about it, but somehow they're not the ones with the low approval ratings. Because according to recent polls, President Biden's approval is worse than the former president's at this point in his presidency. Not, not great. But I know how to help. Mr. President, go out to the Rose Garden and stare directly into a solar eclipse. Don't, <laughs> don't ask me why, but for some reason, people like that better than infrastructure. <laughs> now, it turns out, Turns out, behind the scenes, Biden is seething that his standing is now worse than the former president's. And I don't blame him. The last guy had terrible standing. <laughs> he looks like a penguin with a loaded diaper. <laughs> and now, and now, President Biden's team is worried he could suffer the same one-term fate as Jimmy Carter. Of course, we all know there's a big difference between Biden and Carter. Somehow, Biden seems older. But the White House has a plan. Put Joe on the road to highlight progress being made and let Biden be Biden. Yes, we're getting some Joe classic. But cover your kids' ears, because Biden has been so frustrated, he's reportedly resorted to salty language. <laughs> You're darn Rudy toot tootin', you donkey mouth boxcar jumping trolley ponies. They tried to take Grandpa's keys away, but I found them tucked under a crocheted teddy bear TP cover. 
Just try and stop me, you taffy pulling, grass rattling, snarky malarkey clod of Ebbets Field sod. Your mother got stuck in her butter chair, and your pappy smooches the Kaiser's pickle alba. <laughs> now I'm hopping back in the Corvette. Wait, gas is how much? <laughs> Who the f is the president? <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Jake Tapper and comedian Joel Tim Booster. But when we come back, Queen Elizabeth.